Do you consider it is imaginable that in the distant past there was absolute nothingness as opposed to something as we are now? Um, I don't think we can really answer that. And I think for us to try and pretend to answer that is kind of incorrect because we know what happened maybe a few years ago because we were alive, but we don't know what happened 400 years ago. We can read books and we can read things. We don't know what happened 4,000 years ago. So for me to concretely say there was something or there was nothing is, is, is probably a mistake. Do I believe there was nothing? Well, my human brain can't comprehend nothing because we've always had something. Um, so my answer to this question is actually really long and convoluted in the sense that I can't really tell you the answer to that because I wasn't alive when there was nothing. But of course, if there was nothing, I wouldn't be alive. I can't answer the question, really. Shall I give you my take on this? Absolutely, I'm, I'm really interested to hear this, yeah. Yeah, sure. So the th nothing I'm talking about is the philosophical nothing in which this absence of everything. Now, if we understand at least conceptually what this is, that means this nothingness doesn't have anything within it to do anything, to create anything, to produce anything, to manufacture anything, to bring about existence of anything else. Because simply, it's the absence of everything. In general, in our physics, that we understand to do something, you need energy. The nothing that I'm referring to doesn't possess energy, doesn't have energy, doesn't borrow energy because there's nothing there, it was simply nothing at that point. So in a state like this, nothingness will result in nothingness all the time. There will never be something at all, ever. Why? To bring into something, because something, when we say something, for example, you and I, we are matter and energy, in interconvertible, right? Yeah, yeah. E, e energy, equals yeah, mc squared. So you, you know this equation very well. So we are matter and energy. This something could not come about by nothing, when it was nothingness whatsoever. Because we're talking about energy when we talk about matter. It can't just pop out from nothingness. Popping out means who's doing the popping out? Who's driving that popping out into existence? Or popping into existence? From what? So, if something exists today, it is not imaginable in a logical, rational sense that out there was at one point in the distance past, however distant that was, there was absolute nothingness. Even the uh, uh, atheist philosophers will agree to that point because you can't get something from nothing. It simply cannot happen. This, this doesn't make any sense. So if this is the case, that we cannot imagine a situation, a time, time in inverted commas, right? Because time itself is debatable whether it began or it was always there and which theory of time you follow. So was there in the distant past absolute nothingness? We will say no, there has to be always something. The very reason is something exists now. We are here now, there has to be always something in the past. So there will always be, no matter how far you go back, there will be eternally something in existence. That is something we can come into this understanding because there cannot be absolute nothingness. And as a Muslim, I do find that the Quran actually mentions this point for us to reflect on it. It says, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in. Did they, am khuliqu, were they created from nothingness? And I know that, and you know that, for example, even our existence as a biological creation, there has to be our parents who brought us into existence. So we didn't come from, we cannot come from absolute nothingness. This cosmos with its all substance within it, whether you want to call it just pure energy in its in a primordial form, it cannot be a result of absolute nothingness at one point.